In this episode of Bake Across Europe, we're traveling to Norway to bake Norwegian school bread or skolebrød. These are a cardamom flavored sweet bun filled with pastry cream, dipped in icing and sprinkled with coconut. They are a delicious Norwegian childhood favorite. Join me today as I show you how to make the recipe and stick with me throughout the video where I will share with you the cultural traditions and history surrounding these buns. Let's get started. First, we're going to start with the vanilla pastry cream. You may want to start this 24 hours in advance, just because you're going to need to fully chill this before starting on the buns. It takes at least four hours in the refrigerator to fully chill through. So to a bowl, you're going to add five egg yolks, 100 grams or half a cup of sugar, and two tablespoons of cornstarch. Then you're going to whisk this until the sugar is dissolved and the mixture is thick and light yellow. Cover this and set aside while you heat the milk. Then you're going to pour into a heavy bottom saucepan 250 milliliters or one cup of whole milk plus 250 milliliters or one cup of heavy cream. Heat this over medium heat and bring to a very light simmer. You're going to want to stir often so the milk doesn't burn. Then you're going to temper the eggs with this hot milk. Tempering means you're going to very slowly pour in the hot milk to the egg mixture while whisking vigorously. This will help prevent the eggs from curdling when the egg mixture is added back into the rest of the pot. You will pour about a third of the milk into the eggs to temper them. So while I'm doing this, I'll tell you a little bit about the pastry. Um, it likely originated in the 1950s and it has the name school bread because it's put in children's lunches and served in cafeterias and is often eaten as an after school snack for kids. Its most common name is Skola Brut, which means school bread, but it's also known as Skola Bola or school buns. And there are also some regional variants, which I'll put here on the screen so I don't butcher the pronunciation of them. So I take those tempered eggs and I pass them through a fine mesh sieve just to make sure there were no curdled eggs from when I was tempering them. So now you're going to want to whisk this continuously over medium, medium low heat and you're going to whisk until it becomes thick. It may take a few minutes and you're looking for a pudding like consistency. And once it starts to bubble and burp, you're going to let that happen for an, about another five minutes. This is a really crucial stage so that it doesn't actually become liquid back in the refrigerator when it cools down. So let it bubble and burp for five minutes, but you need to continuously stir the whole time. Then once you've taken it off of the heat, you're going to whisk in one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Then you're going to take the hot pastry cream and you're going to pour it into a container and you're going to put plastic wrap over the top of the pastry cream. Now you want to have that plastic wrap directly touching the pastry cream so that a skin does not form when it's cooling down in the refrigerator. And if you see a little foot poking out behind me, that's just my baby on my back. So now we're going to get started on the dough for the buns. First, we're gonna start by taking 500 milliliters or two cups plus two tablespoons of whole milk and pouring that into a small soft pan. Then you're going to add 150 grams or 10 and a half tablespoons of unsalted butter and two tablespoons of ground cardamom. 
And then you're just going to gently melt that and warm it up on the stove. Um, you, you don't need to let it boil or simmer or anything like that. You definitely don't want to skip putting the cardamom in the warm milk and steeping it to bring out the flavor. I tested this recipe two different ways, one with the cardamom steeped in the hot milk and one just mixed straight into the rest of the ingredients, and there was a very big difference in flavor, so definitely don't skip this step. Then pour the hot milk mixture into a bowl and let it cool down to about body temperature before you proceed to mixing it into the rest of the dough. Then to a standing mixer, or you could do this by hand, you add in the cooled milk mixture and yeast. I used instant yeast, 17 grams, or you could do 50 grams fresh or 20 grams active dry yeast. Then add in 90 grams of granulated sugar, or half a cup. Then add a little bit at a time of 800 grams, or five cups and three quarters of a cup of bread flour. And a teaspoon of salt. I usually add that halfway through, just so that the salt and the yeast don't come into direct contact with one another, because salt can kill yeast. So while the dough is mixing, I'll share with you a little bit more about these buns. Um, these were originally called Skolebrut, or school bread, but some concerned parents in the 1970s tried to change the name to Skolebola, or school buns, because they were concerned that if these were called bread, that children would associate these with healthy everyday bread and not understand that these were a treat to only be eaten sometimes. So that's when the name changed to appease these parents. And apparently Norwegians are divided on how they eat school bread. In 2021, the Information Office for Bread and Grain in Norway put out a survey where 50% of Norwegians said that they eat their school bread crosswise like a regular bun, and 47% said that they eat their way around it and save the yellow center for last. If you're Norwegian, how do you eat school bread? Share with me in the comments below. Now looking back at the dough here, you're going to knead the dough for 10 minutes until it comes clean off the sides of the bowl and can pass the window pane test, which is where you stretch a small piece of dough and if you can see through the middle without it ripping a ton, then the gluten is properly developed. Then you're going to let the dough rise in a warm place in a covered bowl for about 30 to 40 minutes or until doubled in size. And there's actually a school bread day. The Information Office for Bread and Grain in Norway started an official school bread day in 2017 to celebrate the end of the school years. It takes place every year on the last Friday before the summer holidays where they serve the children school bread to celebrate. Because in their words, you're allowed to enjoy yourself a little bit extra after a long year of school or work. And as that quote implies, not just children enjoy school bread on that day, but adults also enjoy the childhood treat on the last Friday before the summer holidays. And this year's school bread day is June 16th, 2023. Now you're going to take the dough and divide it into 20 equal pieces. You could just eyeball it, but I like to weigh the dough in grams and then divide that number by 20. Then each ball should weigh about that number, give or take a gram or two. You're going to form each of these pieces into a ball and place them spaced a couple of inches apart on a parchment lined baking sheet. To form balls, flatten your ball of dough, then pull in all edges towards the center Pinch the center, then roll it in a circular motion several times under your hand. Then pull the ball towards you on an unfloured surface, rotating it and repeating a couple of times. Make sure your surface is unfloured because the tension between the dough and the countertop will help to create good structure in the bun. This is similar to creating a bread bowl.
Then cover the buns and let rise for about 30 minutes or until doubled in size. Now you're going to take the risen buns and with your thumb make a generous well in the center of each bun. Now take your chilled pastry cream out of the fridge. An easy way to put this into a piping bag is to put a bag into a tall glass. You can either use a real piping bag or just a resealable plastic bag like I did. Put one corner of the bag into the bottom of the glass, whisk the pastry cream until it's no longer a solid mass, and then spoon it into the bag packing it down so you don't have large air bubbles. Twist it shut and snip the corner off. Pipe pastry cream into the well of each bun. Then brush the dough with an egg wash made of one egg whisked with half an eggshell's worth of milk. Bake at 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius for 12 to 15 minutes or until golden brown. Let cool completely on a rack before going on to the next step. To make the icing, whisk together 240 grams or two cups of powdered sugar with two to three tablespoons of water. You may need to play with the water amount to get the perfect consistency. It needs to be pourable, but thick enough not to run off the bun. Then sprinkle each bun with shredded, unsweetened coconut while the icing is still wet. After you've glazed and sprinkled the coconut on the buns, you want to let them sit for about an hour, maybe an hour or two, and let the icing dry just so that it doesn't run off um, when eating the buns. These buns are the perfect texture and consistency you're not going to want to miss this recipe. The cardamom flavor really comes out in the dough and the perfect custard filling is just delicious paired with the sweet icing and coconut sprinkled on top. Definitely eat these the day they are baked, otherwise they will go stale and slightly hard the next day. Um, my guess is that these would probably freeze pretty well. I would flash freeze them on a baking tray and then put them into a container once they're fully frozen. And then just let the container sit out with the lid on and let them come to room temperature before opening the lid. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed the recipe. 
If you have a child getting out of school this time of year, maybe surprise them with these buns on the last Friday before school is out. Or honestly, they're just delicious with a cup of coffee as an afternoon snack. So don't miss this recipe. They are one of my favorite that I've tried so far. As always, let me know in the comments below if there are any recipes from Europe that you'd like to see me feature in a future video. And if you'd like to know what I'm doing between videos, follow me on social media. I'll link all of my accounts below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you next time.